let's talk about a couple of ways hospitals could be paid when they provide the facilities for inpatient stays. The first is essentially fee for service. Here, the hospital is paid a fee for every service provided to the patient. If a patient uses a bed for a day, the hospital gets paid a fee. Gets a medicine provided by the hospital, the hospital gets a fee. A lab test, a fee, and so on. One way this could be implemented is that hospitals often maintain what we call a charge master, a list of all the services the hospital can provide, generally thousands of things, and the amount the hospital charges for each. Hospitals and intermediaries may negotiate over payments using the charge master, either over specific fees or in the aggregate. You may hear a hospital getting paid 60% of billed charges under its agreement with some insurer, for example. That probably means the hospital will bill fee-for-service for charges from its charge master, and the insurer will pay 60% of the amount from the charge master. Another relative would be cost-based reimbursement, where the hospitals present the intermediaries with some accounting of their costs for providing care for a patient, or maybe for a group of patients, and are paid based on that. A second system we can look at we'll call a per diem system. That's a Latin phrase that means per day or for each day, and that's a clue to how this system works. Payment in a per diem system is done on the basis of a day in the hospital. In this system, hospitals and intermediaries set a fixed amount the hospital will be paid for a patient day in the hospital or the costs incurred for caring for that particular patient that day. We can call the amount the per diem. The more days in the hospital stay, the more payment there is in a per diem system. If a patient's in the hospital two days, the hospital gets two times the per diem. Three days, then three times the per diem, like that. A key here is that the amount the hospital gets paid is a function of the number of days in the hospital, but not the specific set of services performed. If a patient gets a lot of services in a day, the hospital gets the same payment as if the patient only got a few. There are some variations that are commonly found to the most basic per diem model, which I just described. First, there can be different per diems for different kinds of services, commonly to recognize more expensive kinds of care. For example, hospitals might negotiate a higher per diem for patients who are in an intensive care unit, or maybe patients getting heart surgery, as compared to patients getting more routine standard care. Sometimes you might find different per diems, for example, for obstetric care. A second variant would allow different per diems for different days in the hospital. For example, the first day of a stay for a patient getting surgery might be paid at a higher per diem rate than other later days when maybe the patient is using fewer services than on the first day. And a third variant you'll see would allow for separate payments for particularly high cost things like really expensive drugs. In this case, the per diem would be set to cover everything except some identified set of drugs for which the insurer would pay separately maybe on a fee-for-service basis. There's a term you might hear associated with this sort of situation. We call it a carve-out. Here, the expensive drugs would be said to be carved out of the per diem payment arrangement, and they'd be handled by a separate payment agreement. Sometimes you might see all three of these variations in place, sometimes not. It depends on the way the hospitals and the insurance companies negotiate the agreements when they set this up. So that's a fee-for-service and a per diem system two ways that you'll see hospitals paid sometimes in the real world.